We've reached the point in our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. Jesus established this ordinance so that we will remember him, and specifically we remember him by remembering his death. When we take the, the bread, we remember his body. When we take the cup, we remember his blood. And it was in his blood that he established the new covenant by which the Holy Spirit has been made to indwell us permanently. This morning, we want to look at a passage of scripture that will help us to better appreciate what Jesus did when he died on the cross. And if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand and the men will see that you, you get one. And if you don't own a Bible, you, you, this is your gift. We're going to look at a passage in John chapter 15, and uh, this is a part of the upper room discourse which Jesus spoke with his disciples the night before he was crucified. When you get your Bible, or if you, uh, if you haven't done it, open to John 15, and I'm going to read verses 12 through 16. Let's first just ask God's blessing as we read the word. Father, I thank you for the song, the, the two songs that we've just sung that really speak of the very thing that we're talking about, the, the death of Christ, what the sacrifice he made. And I pray that as we look to your word now that that will enlighten our eyes, that we may better appreciate what you did for us. In Jesus' name, amen. John 15, verses 12 through 16. <clears throat> this is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known unto you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This passage begins with a command of Jesus to his disciples to love one another, and this love has its origin in God. At this point, the disciples had been with Jesus for three years. They knew his love for them. And his command is that you love one another the same way that I have loved you. Back in verse 9, Jesus describes how he loved them. He, he says, in, back in verse 9, he says, Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. And then in verse 15, or verse 10 rather, he says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have also kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus is bringing his disciples into the eternal love that's existed within the Godhead eternally. In verse 13, Jesus describes an act that demonstrates the greatest love that a man can have for his friends. He says, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. These, were, these words were spoken to his disciples the day before he laid down his life for them. There, there may be some men who would actually give their life for a friend. But none of them could have accomplished what Jesus did when he gave his life for his friends. Being the eternal God-man, only, God, only he could satisfy the wrath of God against their sins. Only his righteousness could be imputed to them to give them a standing before God. I'm sure that the disciples probably didn't comprehend the magnificence of what Jesus was saying to them at that time. 
but later they would. Later Peter would write, he bore himself, uh, he, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. John would later write, he himself is the propitiation, that means the satisfaction of God's wrath against our sin, the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This friendship with Jesus extends beyond the disciples. It extends to others in Israel. It extends to others in the farthest reaches of the earth. It extends beyond that time to future generations so that we read in the book of Revelation that there will be people from every tribe, tongue, and nation who will become friends of God. A man, a mark of friendship is that we keep his commandments. And friendship involves more than a master-slave relationship. Now it's true that the Bible says that we are slaves. Christ is the master. But there's more to it. As, as friends, he brings us into a special knowledge of himself, a relationship with himself that slaves would not have with their masters. He also reveals to them truth that we would not have otherwise. He tells his disciples that, that uh, he says, a slave doesn't know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all that I have heard from the Father I have made known to you. So we learn that not only was Christ, did not only he take the initiative to lay down his life for us, he also took down, uh, laid down his initiative to make us his friends, to choose us for eternal life. He tells his disciples that you didn't choose me, I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bring fruit, forth fruit. And then he later tells us through the Apostle Paul in Ephesians that uh, it was before the foundation of the world that God chose us in Christ to eternal life. Christian, meditate on the things that Jesus did to make you his friend. As you realize that you were called to abide in the love that the Father has for us. And that we have that relationship with the Godhead that is only possible because of what Jesus did on the cross. And if you're here and you realize that you're really not a friend of Jesus, we ask that you not partic participate in the Lord's Supper. This is for those who are his friends, but we would ask that you realize and we would urge you to consider that Christ's death on the cross is the only way that God has of making you his friend. There's no other way. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby man must be saved. So at, at this time, we would ask the men to come forward and to serve us. And uh, whenever your heart is prepared, you may partake. <clears throat>